As a programmer, I spend an ungodly number of hours focusing on a computer screen. And for most of my career, I've operated under the assumption that coffee or caffeine was necessary to perform that job at a high level. In my poll of over 70,000 other developers, over 80% consumed some form of caffeine before writing code. But in reality, caffeine is just a trade-off. In fact, it makes three different trade-offs in your brain that we'll look at later. I've always loved the ritual of drinking coffee, and I've been drinking about three cups a day since I was a teenager. Now, long story short, I quit drinking caffeine about a year ago, and it's had a surprisingly positive impact on my life, and that's why I'm even bothering to make this video. I'm not here to say caffeine is bad or that you need to quit, but you might be surprised at how unnecessary caffeine really is if you're a developer, software engineer, or someone else that needs to stare at a computer. Going from full-blown caffeine addict to decaf is not an easy transition and probably not worth it for most people. The reason I quit is because I was dealing with anxiety that was trying to ruin my life. Like I might be grocery shopping and suddenly feel like I'm going to die, or wake up in the middle of the night and feel like I'm going to die, or be going for a walk outside and feel like I'm going to die. I could have gotten on a pill for that, but wanted to exhaust every natural remedy first. I had been drinking coffee for forever, so really didn't think it would have any impact. Then I discovered the decaf subreddit, and people were talking about how quitting caffeine was like a miracle drug for anxiety. Against the advice of people online, I quit cold turkey, going from three cups a day to zero. For the first few days, I had a moderately bad headache and was irritable thinking about coffee all the time. But it really wasn't that bad because I was motivated to power through those withdrawals. Things didn't really get hard until about day five, because the headaches went away and were replaced by just straight up depression. I was super tired and it was almost impossible to get any work done. The good thing is that this depression and tiredness seemed to replace the anxiety, but it was still too much and I ended up cheating and going back to coffee. I felt much better, but right on cue, the anxiety started back up with it a couple of days later. At that point, I knew I had to quit, but this time weaned off a little more slowly with green tea and half-calf. My mood was depressed again, but that really only lasted for about two weeks. My mood recovered, but my energy levels not so much. I was sleeping great, but really tired during the day, unmotivated, and just feeling uncreative. But the anxiety was dialed down from 100% down to like 10%. The low energy lasted for almost three months, and honestly, I thought that was just my life now. I went from a caffeinated workaholic pushing out two videos a week on my YouTube channel to barely being able to find the strength to push the keys on the keyboard. But then something unexpected started happening. Within a relatively short period, I started feeling motivated again and found the energy and creativity to work at levels I was working at previously. In other words, I was back to normal, but with a whole bunch of added benefits. Most importantly, the random out of nowhere anxiety was gone. But in addition, when I wake up in the morning, I don't crave coffee. I just feel awake and ready to start the day. Whereas previously, the first order of business every morning was to get some caffeine. That might be because I'm getting much better sleep at night. And in general, I just feel more aware of my energy levels throughout the day. If you follow my work on Fireship, you'll notice that the video output is higher than it's ever been. And I credit that productivity partially to eliminating caffeine. That seems like a paradox based on our culture, but it makes total sense when you understand how caffeine affects the brain. Now, I'm not a rocket surgeon, so don't take this as medical advice, but the real scientists don't even know exactly how caffeine works either. There are three main things that caffeine does to your body. Your neurons have something called an adenosine receptor, which accepts a molecule called adenosine that's responsible for making you tired. Caffeine is an antagonist to this receptor, which means it binds to it and blocks adenosine from being absorbed naturally. When you first wake up, your body has metabolized away adenosine and you're ready to start the day. As the day progresses, adenosine binds to the A1 receptor until you ultimately fall back asleep at the end of the day. Now when you put caffeine into your system, it binds to that receptor and that's why it makes you feel awake and alert. Eventually the caffeine is metabolized and the effect wears off and it has a half-life of about 3 to 10 hours depending on the person. So it's not actually giving you a boost of energy, it's just temporarily preventing you from being tired. So in return for a fake energy boost, you get a crash and likely poor sleep later on. Another thing caffeine does is delay dopamine reabsorption. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that makes us feel good. And by delaying its reabsorption, we feel a little better than we would normally when drinking caffeine. And that's why it's so addictive in the first place. You're basically just trading an artificially good mood now for a bad mood later. And you probably have no idea that your bad mood is related to caffeine. The third thing caffeine does is raise your blood pressure, which is something that naturally happens when you're in a stressful situation. Nobody's exactly sure why this happens, but the leading theory is that it leads to a chain reaction of hormone regulation that causes your adrenal gland to release more adrenaline, which itself is the hormone that controls your fight or flight response, the exact thing that's going haywire when you have anxiety issues. So the bottom line here is that caffeine is not magic. It's just a bunch of trade-offs and side effects that you'd want to consider with any drug or medication. It's not like meth or heroin, but it's very easy to to live your life addicted to it without ever really thinking about it. Some people say it's good for your health, others say it's bad, but all I can tell you is that I'm never going back.